evening, microbiology class. Welcome to lecture two, video edition, the snowed in version. Obviously, I canceled class today, so we are going to still try to keep on track, and that's why I recorded today's lecture, and I'm sending it to you to watch this evening. I don't want to get too far behind because who knows how much snow we're actually going to have this semester. So what will happen is that you will watch today's lecture, you will complete a short assignment and email it to me by tonight, and then next week we will do the lab that we were supposed to do today, next week, in addition to gram staining, which is still scheduled for next week. Today we're going to do a microscope review, so a small review of what we talked about last week. And then we're going to jump into new material of defining what a simple stain was, or what it is, and how to conduct one. So let's get started. So last week you were introduced to a compound light microscope. You were taught the terms of the different components and how to operate a compound light microscope. So I just want to review a few of the key important points that I would have asked you on a quiz today um, as scheduled. So the key components are a microscope does two things. It, what? If you are with me right now, you should be saying magnification and also resolution. Right? The definition of magnification, as we used in class, is that just makes things bigger under the microscope. So it makes small things, small things visible by making bigger. You still see that down there? And resolution was what? the distinction between two points. What's important for you to understand is that these are both independent terms when talking about the functions of a microscope. You can have a microscope that has high resolution but low magnification, or high magnification with poor resolution. And hopefully you get to work with a microscope that has high magnification and also high resolution. If we were to make a list of the different components on the microscope, on a light compound microscope, of what enhances magnification and what enhances resolution, we can put them in two lists. So let's do that together. But let's think, you think about it for a second of what on the microscope helps with magnification. The first thing you should be thinking is the ocular lenses. Those are the lenses that you look through in a microscope where your eyes sit to look down at, onto the stage. <laughs> the snow plow is going past my house right now and it's really loud. Anyways, okay, so ocular lens has a magnification of 10x already. So anything that you're looking at is magnified by the ocular lens. The other component that aids in magnification on a microscope are the objectives. On our microscope, we have a 4x, a 10x, a 40x and a 100x. So remember these four are called the dry objectives and the 100x is the oil objective which we'll review here in one minute. These objectives magnify at different capacities based on the amount of lenses that sit in the objective. 
So if we were to try to find out the total magnification of our microscope on a certain objective, we would multiply the magnification of one objective with the magnification of the ocular lens. So in this situation, our total magnification is 100x from the ocular times 100x from the objective, and we would have 100x. That's the equation to find out the total magnification of your microscope under a certain objective. So those are the two components, ocular lenses and objectives, that aid in the magnification. Now, resolution, I already have condenser on here, um, is, the, is one of the components that increase the resolution, the distinction to see two points. The condenser does that because it is a series of lenses that sits right above the illuminator, but below the stage on a microscope. And what it does, it concentrates, condenses, light so it is not spread out, that it's focused on the specimen and so when you see it you don't see a lot of scattered light. So a very good condenser will condense all of the light so you, there are not a lot of distracted or dif diffracted rays. The other component that aids in resolution is the iris or the diaphragm as your book defines it as, which is a wheel that sits below the condenser and also above the illuminator that helps um, control how much light is going into the condenser to condense before it goes into the stage. So without the iris you would have nothing controlling the amount of light allowed to enter through the condenser. So these two components, the condenser and the iris, help and aid the resolution in your microscope. So next we're going to label the different parts of a microscope and follow the light path of a microscope in the light compound microscope that you use in lab. Um, and then, yeah, and then we're going to move on to new material, the simple stain. So let's label everything first. I just drew this on my refrigerator um, with dry erase markers, so be kind. This is a really bad sketch, but it will work for what we need. So we'll start at the bottom here. This is the base. Here where light comes from is called the illuminator. All right. So I'm going to, the light path will be in red and labeling components will be green. So this is the illuminator. We can also just call it the light source. That's fine too. I mean, that's, it's just, it's the light. Okay. And then this wheel here is the iris. Remember the wheel that controls the amount of light from the light source that's able to go into the condenser. This is the condenser. Now remember, this is supposed to just be a review. Um, for those of you who are coming to my class new, at least you get to have this lecture and don't get to miss out. Anyway, so this is the power source, iris, condenser. Here is the stage where you put your sample on. These are your different objectives back here. So remember we have, these are four different objectives. And then up here are the ocular lenses. And this is where you put your eyeballs to look through and to see your, spe your specimen on the stage. We also defined that this was the um, body tube where the prism and mirrors sit inside the microscope to reflect the light from the stage into the ocular lenses. And this is the arm to help you carry. Now remember, you always carry the microscope with your arm, with the arm, obviously with your arms, with the arm and the base of the microscope holding it 
like, I guess, like this. Um, so never forget, but none of you messed that up last week, and I was very proud. You all did a very good job. Okay, so those are the components that you need to know. Let's follow the light source. So you should be able to say this along with me at this point, and I would encourage you to do so and while you're watching. So the light goes through the illuminator, through the iris, through the condenser, through the stage, onto what is the slide, up to the objective, through the body tube, through a series of prisms and mirrors and craziness, then through the objective. I mean, sorry, the ocular lens, the ocular lens. So you should be able to explain that for me in a future quiz. You should be able to do that with no problem. So let's move on to simple stain. There are a few key terms you will need to define first before making preparing a slide. The first step is making a smear, which we can define as a thin suspension of microbial sample onto a slide. So let's, let's break that down and think of what that means. Let's say you have a tube, a test tube, and it's full of broth. Now this is a broth that bacteria grow in overnight at 37 degrees, some of them Celsius, and it will be real cloudy and turbid, not like drinking water, it will be like muddy. You won't be able to see quite through it. It's cloudy. And so that means that there is bacterial growth. So to make a smear, you will dip a, a loop. It's like a metal loop, um, which is sterile. So a sterile, sterile metal loop into the broth. And you will remove just a little teeny drop. Just You only need a quite very small amount and you put it onto your slide here. So this is your glass slide. And you will take your loop, just like this, and smear it in like a, in a circle. So you'll be holding your, this is, my hand is the slide, this is the loop, and you'll smear it in a small circle onto the slide. So it's about, you know, whatever, it is this big. And relative, you know, in the, to the slide. So that's, this process is called making a smear. Once you have made the smear, you need, to, what, you need to fix it. So this is one, this is step two. You need to fix the slide, meaning once you've made your smear and it has air dried, so I guess you have to let it air dry. And so this should not take more than two minutes. If it takes more than two minutes, then you have put way too much of the bacterial culture. So this is a cult, it's called a culture you've put too much culture onto your slide. So it should be able to air dry within two minutes. Once it has air dried, then you want it to fix it with fire. So some of you have made use a Bunsen burner before. If you have it now, here's your chance. You're gonna play with your Bunsen burner. You're going to gently waft the slide over the, over the flame. Flame! Woo! Okay, so what this will look like, again, if this is, um, this is my slide and this is the fire here, you're just going to waft, waft, waft. You're not going to take the slide and just let it sit on the flame because you'll kill, well, I mean, you'll just torch your bacteria, but you also you could break the slide as well. So it's just a waft, waft, waft over a flame and that is called fixing it. So you smear, you fix. And step three, after you flame it, is you're going to add a mordant. 
Well, yes, the morning. And a mordant is added to make a microorganism stain more intense or to increase the abundance of the invisibility. So for our simple stain next week that we're going to do, there will be no mordant. Um, but we will define what that is in the gram stain next week when we talk about that. So we don't need to really think about this right now. Um, but this will be important for another kind of stain we'll do next week. So once you have fixed with heat, heat fix, um, we are going to yeah, cross off more for now. And three, we will stain. And what that will look like, you can use different kind of stains. So step three, staining. We're going to use positive stains, meaning that they are charged ionically more positive than negative because bacteria are negative. So if we add a positive stain to something that's negative, that's why the stains will stick onto the bacteria and you'll be able to see them under the microscope. If we added a negative stain, what end up happening is that the bacteria would stay clear and the background would be whatever color the dye was. So this is the dye and this is the bacteria. It will look the reverse of what we're going to see next week when you do the simple stain. So if this was, I'll go through that one more time. If this is positive, then our bacteria end up looking dark, be purple, onto a white background. background. So this is called, this situation is called a basic stain or a basic dye because it's positive. We'll learn about stains that do use negative dyes in order to have the reverse of this, of the when this dye is negative and the bacteria are clear and the background is dark. It's because the negative attaches to the background as opposed to the bacteria because negative and negative repel each other whereas positive and negative bind together. This is called an acidic stain. So next week you will, you will not be performing any sort of acidic stain, but you will get to see the results of acid stains. Um, but next week you will be doing only basic stains and then also gram stains. So let's look, let's break down what the staining step looks like. Again, <laughs> stain. So when you add crystal violet, which is the name of the dye, you will hold your bacteria, I mean, sorry, you will hold your slide at an angle, I'd say at like a 45 degree angle. So you don't need to hold it like this, you're gonna hold it off to the side. You're going to let your, the slide sit perfectly horizontal, again, so a little, it was turned like this and now you're going to let it sit for 30 seconds. 
and then you will wash with water. Again, into the basin. Everything that everything you do in lab is the stain is into the basin. So let's just walk through that like step by step the whole process. So I've talked kind of broke down everything, so let's just make a short little list of each step. Step one, make smear. Number two, fix smear. You can either do this chemically or with heat. We are going to do this with heat in our lab. So we fixed it. Then we're going to add stain or the dye. Remember there are two different kinds of stains. There are basic and acidic. In our lab we're going to use basic. Number four is wash with water. Remember, it's uh, step three and four are over the basin. Um, and you add, you know, you get the component stain, the extra stain and the extra water into the basin. And then you will add it into the hazardous waste, which I'll make sure to point out to you next week. So there's four steps. And in the first step, what I forgot to point out is that there you can make a smear from liquid media to solid media. So let me define what that means. So I talked about when defining what a smear was, I told you that you may have a tube that is a bacterial culture, so you have like this broth, this soup that the bacteria grew in overnight. That is a liquid culture. So this is like the the media, the, the um, platform of which the bacteria are growing in, where the nutrients are that that's that's a word for media. So there's liquid media, which is like the soup. I don't know if you can read that. Yeah, soup. And then the solid is kind of like this really hard jello that the bacteria can grow on top. So you have like a circle plate, and there's this hard jello, and the bacteria will grow in these little dots. And you can pick up a solid like bacterial colony, so one of those dots, so referred to as a colony. So a bacterial colony. And then you could follow the same procedure of making a smear and adding the stain and washing it with water at the end. The one difference is when you pick a colony, a bacterial colony off of solid media, you need to add some water. So there's like an extra, this is like step 1B. If you are using solid media, you need to add one drop of water. And then you can go to fixing to number two. You can go to fixing the smear. And this is because you can't, spread out the microbial suspension. You can't make a suspension. You can't make a smear if all you have is just this firm paste. So you want to add some water to make it easy smear onto your slide. So that concludes our lecture for today. I'm going to give you your assignment now. I hope this has been clear and beneficial for you Please give me your feedback. If you appreciated this or you hated this, I let me know how this was for you. Okay, so your assignment for today that you can just write in, write me an email with these with with this completed assignment. You don't need to write it in a word document, attach it. I mean, you can if you want, but you can just write it directly into the email. 
You're going to do three things for me. Three. Yes, that's three. Three things for me. You're going to define Brahmi emotion. Now, I think your book has a definition of Brahmi emotion, which is great to get you started, but I certainly don't want you to just write that out to me and send back. I want you to do just a little bit of reading, even if it is just on Wikipedia, um, but to read about what Brahmi emotion is, because we'll have a further conversation about the phenomenon um, next week. So I want you to write out just a few sentences or a small paragraph defining what Brahmi emotion is. Then I want you to answer two questions, questions one and two, under the clinical application section on page 56 for the simple stain. And then I want you to write out the four steps to a simple stain that I talked about in this video. Um, you can write, I would like for you to write it out with a little bit of detail. Basically, you're writing this out to me um, to show me that, well, one, you've watched the video, and then secondly, that next week when we go to do our stain, that you already have this protocol, this little, like, recipe of exactly what you're going to be doing. So you should be able to read it and just do your experiment from what you wrote. So it will make it clearer for you and just to make sure that you understood what we're doing. So let me know if you have any questions. You can always email me tonight at any time or any time this week. I want you to send these to me by this evening, so midnight tonight. Um, if you have any problems, please just email me. And I will see you next week. Stay safe and be warm. Bye.